BPI. Robinson's bank merger gets shareholders' approval. The proposed merger between the Bank of the Bank of the Philippine Islands BPI, and Gokongwe-led Robinson's Bank Corporation has secured the GO signal from the Ayala-led bank's shareholders. In a disclosure to the Philippine Stock Exchange on Tuesday, BPI said it held a special stockholders meeting on January 17 to secure the shareholders' approval on the merger between the two lenders, with BPI as the surviving entity, subject to regulatory approvals. The proposed merger with Robinson's Bank Corporation will unlock various synergies across several products and service platforms and expand the customer and deposit base of both banks, said BPI President and CEO Jose Teodoro Limkeoko. Apart from growing BPI's client and deposit base, and expanding synergies, the merger will increase shareholder value by providing BPI opportunities to collaborate across the Gokongwe Group's ecosystem, which includes market-leading businesses in food manufacturing, air transportation, real estate and property development, and multi-format retail companies, said Limkeoko. The BPI chief added that the merger will also expand BPI's access to the Gokongwe network, especially to the Filipino-Chinese market segment, which has been the significant advantage of our closest competitors. Following the special stockholders meeting, BPI and Robinson's Bank will sign the plan of merger and the articles of merger to formalize the transaction, subject to receipt of final regulatory approvals. On effective date of the merger, BPI will issue primary common shares to the Robinson's Bank stockholders that will result in the Gokongwe-led bank's shareholders owning approximately 6% of the resulting outstanding common shares of BPI. The merger will be effective on the first day of the calendar quarter following the completion of the regulatory approvals which is expected to be on 1 January 2024, it said. The parties are in the process of filing with the Philippine Competition Commission and will file shortly with the Banco Central ng Pilipinas and the Securities and Exchange Commission, the bank added. BPI to tap Gokongwe Network to close gap with bigger banking rivals. Bank of the Philippine Islands, BPI, the country's third largest lender is moving into a prized business segment of its bigger rivals following the P27 billion acquisition of Robinson's Bank, part of the Gokongwe family conglomerate JG Summit Holdings. Shareholders of the Zobel family-led BPI ratified the P27 billion merger with Robinson's Bank on Tuesday, which will modestly increase its asset base depositors and profits and also open opportunities in the lucrative Filipino-Chinese market that is dominated by Sai-led BDO Unanbank Inc. and Thai-led Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company. The merger will also expand BPI's access to the network of the Gokongwe Group especially to the Filipino-Chinese market segment, which has been the significant advantage of our closest competitors, BPI President and CEO Jose Teodoro K. Limkeoko said during the meeting on Tuesday. BPI, established during Spain's colonial rule in 1851 as El Banco Español Filipino de Isabel II, is part of the Ayala Corp. The Zobel-led property, banking, telecommunications and power conglomerate. Limkeoko said they would benefit from greater access to the network of JG Summit, which owns food and drinks manufacturing giant Universal Rabina Corp. Property developer Robinson's Land Corp. and Cebu Pacific, the country's top budget airline. He said the effective date of the merger's completion is January 1, 2024. The deal which will give Gokongwe Companies JG Summit and Robinson's Retail Holdings a 6% stake in BPI, will increase revenues by about 7% and profits by 5-6%, to Limkeoko said. Robinson's Retail recently closed a separate deal to acquire 4.4% of BPI, which will give the Gokongwe's more than 10% ownership. After the merger, Robinson's Bank's 162 branches will be converted to BPI while the combined entity undertakes a broader rationalization of branches and operations that would not cause any job cuts.
T. He merger should not result in any layoffs on either side. They have an excellent workforce. We believe there is room for everyone in a merged entity, Limkayoko said. Maria Cristina Ginbi Elgo, BPI head of consumer banking, said during a press briefing on Tuesday considerations in the reorganization of the physical branch network will include the digitalization of the banking industry and potential redundant locations of their outlets. BPI said the transaction and alliance with JG Summit will help it reach a goal of raising consumer loans to 30% of its total loan book. Shareholders of the bank also approved the increase in its authorized capital by P4 billion to cover shares to be issued to Robinson's bank shareholders as a result of the merger. BPI, which has over 9.1 million depositors, ended September 2022 with total assets of P2.5 trillion. Crete parent Citicor Renewable Energy Corp. I's IPO. Manila. Listed Real Estate Investment Trust, Right, Citicor Energy Right Corp., Crete, said on Tuesday its parent is eyeing an initial public offering, IPO, this 2023. Citicor Renewable Energy Corp., CREC, is the sponsor of Crete. CREC is currently considering an initial public offering, IPO, for 2023 subject to the company's submission of requirements and regulatory approvals from SEC, PSE and or other agencies concerned, the company said in a disclosure to the stock exchange. Crete is the first renewable energy real estate investment trust to list on the Philippine Stock Exchange in February 2022. Citicor has renewable energy projects across the country in a partnership with Ayala Corp's ACEN. BPI Robinson Bank. News. Ayala's get shareholders okay to fold in Gokongway led Robinson's bank into BPI. Bank of the Philippine Islands BPI announced that its shareholders approved the proposed merger with Robinson's Bank Corporation, RBC, with the Ayala family's banking arm as the surviving entity. The proposed merger with Robinson's Bank will unlock various synergies across several products and service platforms and expand the customer and deposit base of both banks, BPI President and CEO Jose Teodoro K. Limkayoko said during the special stockholders meeting on Tuesday. With RBC's consumer loans posting a 30% compounded annual growth rate, CAGR, over the past five years, the bank's consumer loans account for 42% of its loan mix, while BPIs comprise 20%. As the relatively high mix of consumer loans has been a key driver for net income growth, BPI said it is aligned with its goal of increasing its consumer loans to 30% of its total loan book. Apart from growing BPI's client and deposit base, and expanding synergies, the merger will increase shareholder value by providing BPI opportunities to collaborate across the Gokongway Group's ecosystem, which includes market-leading businesses in food manufacturing, air transportation, real estate and property development, and multi-format retail companies, Limkayoko said. He said the merger would also expand BPI's access to the Gokongway network, especially to the Filipino-Chinese market segment, which has been the significant advantage of their closest competitors. During the same meeting, shareholders also approved an increase in its authorized capital by P4 billion to cover the required number of common shares to be issued to RBC stockholders. RLC News After P2.5B Windfall from Chengdu Frederick go to wind down China business as RLC goes all in at home. Billionaire O Frederick Go doesn't want any more distractions as Robinson's Land Corp. RLC focuses on accelerating growth in the Philippines in the next few years. The RLC president and CEO said the company is winding down its China operations after raking in a total of P2.5 billion in profit in the last six years. We've decided not to pursue China projects anymore after this Chengdu project. We did extremely well but at the end of the day, we decided to just focus on the Philippines, 
to focus on the many opportunities to build here so as not to be distracted anymore, said Go in an interview with veteran journalist Cez Orenya Drilon on Yusupang Billionario, aired on CNN Philippines. Advertisement. A big chunk of our profits in 2021 and 2022 came from China but it will stop there. In 2023, we're complete. We're done with it, he added. The Chengdu Ban Bian Jia High Rise Project, with a floor area of 220,000 square meters, is RLC's first and only foray in the international market. RLC bought the 8.5 hectare lot in Chengdu, the fifth largest city and one of the richest urban areas in China, through a public auction in 2016. The company repatriated 90% or $200 million of its Chengdu investments as early as 2021. Yusupang Billionario is a digital-first, hybrid magazine show hosted and produced by veteran broadcast journalist Cez Orenya Drilon in cooperation with the Billionario.com team. The 30-minute TV cut airs on CNN Philippines at 8 p.m. every Monday, starting January 16. The full version or producer's cut of each episode, as well as interview splices, will be posted on Billionario.com's YouTube and Facebook accounts. Nickel News. Nickel Asia Board OKs nearly P3B more for re-unit. Listed mining firm Nickel Asia Corp. Announced on Monday that its board of directors approved the additional investment of P2.92 billion in its subsidiary, Emerging Power, Inc. EPI. In its stock market disclosure, Nickel Asia said the investments will be through a subscription to more common shares of EPI, its renewable energy re arm. The company said the additional investments will fund EPI's operations, the operating expenses of its affiliate, Valerian Geothermal Inc., and the operating expenses of its unit, Mindoro Geothermal Power Corp. The investments will also be used for EPI's investments in the projects of its other subsidiaries, including the investment of EPI in Greenlight Renewables Holdings, Inc. Greenlight Renewables is a joint venture between EPI and Shell Overseas Investments BV. With the additional investment, the company's stake in EPI will increase to 95.8%. Last year, Nickel Asia said the joint venture also aims to explore synergies with retail electricity supplier Shell Energy Philippines, Inc. Greenlight Renewables was created to operate a capacity of around 1,000 MW by 2028. Nickel Asia has an interest in mining all kinds of minerals. It also has business in the generation, transmission, distribution and supply of power. For the nine months to September last year, Nickel Asia registered an attributable net income of P6.9 billion, up 12% from a year ago. Earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization amounted to P11.1 billion or slightly higher than the earlier year's P11.01 billion. The company said that despite the lower ore sales volume sold during the period, Revenues rose by 2% to P21.51 billion, largely due to higher nickel ore prices and favorable exchange rates. At the local bourse on Monday, shares in Nickel Asia rose by 8 centavos or 1.19% to end at P6.83 apiece. Ashley Erica O. Jose, CPG News CPG, Century Properties Group Inc. Antonio Family Ready's P3B bond offer to take advantage of resurgent property market. Century Properties Group of the Antonio family is returning to the local debt market with the issuance of up to P3 billion worth of fixed-rate retail bonds. In a regulatory filing, CPG said its board approved the issuance of the second tranche of its P6 billion bond shelf registration that was approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission in January last year. The base offer is P2 billion but there is an option to raise the issue size by P1 billion. The bonds to be issued comprise Series A three-year bonds due 2026, 
Series B five-year bonds due 2028 and Series C seven-year bonds due 2030. CPG earlier launched a new brand that caters to the premium to luxury real estate market. Its first project is the low-density, low-rise exclusive collection of premium townhouses called the Century Newell of Townvillas at Aqua Private Residences located in Makati and Mandaluyong. RLC billionaire Frederick Goh is still amazed at how Robinson's Land Corp. RLC was able to build a 300,000 square meter resort and casino in Cebu despite the challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic to businesses and the global economy. From vision to miracle completion, Frederick Goh thanks Lance Gokongwe for believing in his new star project despite COVID-19 pandemic. Billionario Frederick Goh is still amazed at how Robinson's Land Corp. RLC was able to build a 300,000 square meter resort and casino in Cebu despite the challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic to businesses and the global economy. The president and chief executive officer of RLC proudly told veteran journalist Cesar Orenia Drilon about the impressive feat of building Newstar Resort and Casino in a span of two and a half years, and in historically adverse conditions. By any global standards, you cannot build a facility this big and this beautiful in two and a half years. I don't think it's been done anywhere, Go said in the maiden episode of Yusupang Billionario which aired on CNN Philippines Monday, January 16. RLC broke ground for Newstar in the 8-hectare, government-owned South Road properties in Kawit Island in January 2020, three months before the Philippine government confirmed the first case of COVID-19 in the country. The pandemic led to the imposition of strict lockdowns, with people's movement strictly controlled in the succeeding months as the number of confirmed cases rose. Go credited RLC Chairman Lance Gokongwe for throwing his full support behind the project despite the daunting challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Sometime in April or May, the team was asking me whether Tuloy Ba. Everybody was announcing closure suspension of projects and thankfully, since I got the support or answer. Yes. Tuloy na tuloy, said Go. RLC adapted to the dramatic change in the economic landscape by creating a bubble for the workers to ensure their safety and comply with government protocols. They also farmed out the construction of the casino, hotel and restaurants to different contractors and designers instead of hiring a single firm to ensure the structures will be built as scheduled. More than a year since the COVID-19 pandemic began, RLC faced another challenge in completing Newstar when Typhoon Odette hit Cebu on December 16, 2021. Go said his heart sank when he visited the construction site due to the extent of the damage that the strong winds and rain had caused. I saw all the broken glass, doors were shattered, roof pieces were flying all over the place, equipment were damaged, leaks everywhere. I told my guys, you've done a super job here, if we can't open, I completely understand, he recalled. Go's team members, however, kept their spirits up despite the setback. Construction on the property resumed after a 30-day assessment and reorganization period after Typhoon Odette struck. By December 2022, Newstar was rolling out a series of soft launches. We are where we are today. They did a really fantastic job. Nobody believes that I built this in two and a half years. It's like how in the world did you do it? What we've done here is like short of a miracle. I think God was with us the whole time, he said. Go said Gokongwe, his cousin, has been on board the integrated casino and resort project since he first broached the idea six years ago. The Gokongwe group had been offered a license by the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corp. PAGCOR, more than a decade ago. It could have been the fifth integrated resort developer after Okada, Solaire. City of Dreams and Resorts World but Go said the group declined. It's not a natural segment that you just decide to go into. It's a new industry, 
It's very unique so certain skills and certain resources are needed to operate gaming facilities, Go said. RLC's CEO said he revisited the casino plan a few years later after Singapore issued two casino licenses, Marina Bay Sands, and Resorts World Sentosa. It opened our eyes that gaming, if it is allowed by Singapore, it means it passes all the corporate governance standards, it passes all the regulatory processes, we all know that Singapore is, shall we say, a country that's a stickler for all these governance processes so it kinda opened our minds to it, said Go. When PAGCOR started handing out new licenses in 2016, Go urged the Gokongwe group to grab the opportunity. I needed to secure the approval of Lance, so he should get all the credit for having the foresight to approve this project, he said. Newstar boasts of the largest gaming floor in southern Philippines and the largest convention center in the region. It is currently accepting reservations for the five-star Philly Hotel and Ma 32, Il Primo, Fina, and Shintian D. Yusapang Billionario is a digital first, hybrid magazine show hosted and produced by veteran broadcast journalist Cesar Orenyadri Loan in cooperation with the Billionario.com team. The 30-minute TV cut airs on CNN Philippines at 8 p.m. every Monday, starting January 16. The full version or producer's cut of each episode, as well as interview splices, will be posted on Billionario.com's YouTube and Facebook accounts. San Miguel Food and Beverage. SMC's Illigion Power Plant likely to restart operations next month. San Miguel Corpus's Illigion Power Plant is expected to resume operations by February based on the government and industry target for the implementation of a gas swapping arrangement. Jose Ronald Valles, Manila Electric Company first vice president and head of regulatory management, said in a forum they hope to implement the arrangement on February 26, 2023. He said the arrangement which will allow the Illigion plant to run on natural gas from Malampaya using the allocation of first gas plants, would be subject to the endorsement of the Department of Energy and approval of the Energy Regulatory Commission. The objective really is to address any potential supply deficiency, Valles said. He said stakeholders discussed early this month the term sheet for the fuel swapping arrangement. Valles said the DOE supports the arrangement since it is, for the good of the country. He said first gas would supply Maralca from its Santa Rita natural gas plant using alternative fuel, while SPPC shall use the gas from first gas allocation for the Illigion plant.